What is up, everybody? It has been a bit of a moment since I've uploaded last time, but the reason that is is because I moved. My wife and I finally got ourselves into a house, and so as you see behind me, we finally got a garage. But here in the Midwest, it can get quite cold, and we didn't have a heater or anything in the garage. So I figured I'd wait, kind of get everything organized, settled, and then uh, once the weather turned, I'd start get to uh, get to filming some videos and making some new lures, and at the same time, just testing out some new stuff. So we have neighbors now. You might hear some kids screaming. You might hear some some basketballs bouncing. I don't know, but we're gonna get to it uh, today. It is the first week of March, and what that means is here in the Midwest, the ice is starting to thin. We're gonna start to see some some warm weather come through. And you're going to see some pre, pre spawn or pre pre spawn bass coming out. And what it usually takes around here, I mean, it depends on the water clarity of, of where you're at. But the reality is, is they're going to bite hard on red, orange, sometimes like the crawfish patterns, just because they feed super heavily on craw right around this time. So we're going to make a flat sided crankbait out of cedar. And we're gonna do a craw pattern on it, a nice dark red with a fluorescent orange belly. That's kind of what I'm gonna look at today. I think, you know, clarity around here um, in the Midwest, especially in Nebraska, water clarity could be like two feet of visibility depending on the, the lake that you're at. So some places it's 20, 30. I mean, it's it's crazy, but not here. Uh, we, we have a lot of mud water, a lot of water coming through the Missouri and the Platte that help feed our systems. So. Our, uh, our lakes aren't super clear, but when they are, you know, you'll, you'll have four feet maximum, maybe maybe five feet visibility. But so we're going to make that fluorescent orange at the bottom just be that flare for this. But we're going to we're going to get to it. Stay tuned. This will be the first time I made a, a lure for the, the video and the viewers in the new shop. So here we go. That is the main shape that we're going to look at. You can kind of see that it is nice, strong curvature, thick. Thick body right around there. That's where we're gonna obviously house all the lead uh, and the weight of the bait. And uh, but this thing's gonna it's gonna be pretty strong. I, I'm really excited about these particular baits this time of year. It's a it's a great time to catch a really really big bass. So, well, next thing I'm gonna want to try to chant kind of close down these edges. I like to round them off. So you can either carve them or use the belt sander. This particular one, I'm just gonna carve a little bit and use the belt sander to finish it off and then hand sand, which I'll show you here shortly. Got the edges pretty much curved off of, to where I wanna start. If you are a bait maker and have a metal vise, I've seen a lot of people take duct tape to their vise or whatever, um, just so you don't mar up your baits when you're, when you're doing any sanding or especially hand sanding. These things are sweet. I think I got these on Amazon for like 10 bucks. They're magnetic. These are rubber. This particular area really, really protects that particular spot. And, he, and he, you may notice a couple marks here and there, but you can sand those off real quickly and really easily. But pop them in the vise. They magnetize themselves to the vise, and then you are able to clamp it down nice and solid. So when you get your pieces of sandpaper out, and start going to town you can really make sure that it doesn't mess up too much so let's get to sanding getting pretty close. So I need to start to drill some holes for the line tie and hook hangers. And then we're gonna drill probably a 3 8 inch hole that's gonna be about maybe a half inch deep. I like to put a decent amount of lead in these. This is cedar, obviously. It's a buoyant wood. It's gonna float pretty high in that water column. 
I think most of the lakes that I'll fish this at will be three to eight feet deep where I'll be fishing it. So if I can get it to dive anywhere around there, then, then we're going to be fine. So three eighth inch hole, about a half inch deep right here. And then I will drill line ties and hook hangers. And we're going to seal this wood after I do those two things, as well as drill small little holes for the eye sockets. So that's next. Get them inserted in. Just make sure they fit, they line up. Then I just super glue them in. You're not gonna be able to see this necessarily, but right now I zeroed my um, little handy dandy measurement tool for weight and it is sitting at 10 grams right now. And for instance, this is kind of a full on bladed. That's 16 grams. Ours is gonna be a little heavier than that just cause it is wood. But once we're gonna have this lead melted and we're gonna be good to go. with the lead added. Now we're close, hitting to 24 grams without the uh, super glue and baking soda, without the hooks, without the lips, without everything. So pretty good. We should be able to get this thing down to about seven to eight feet. And that is quick and easy fixings. Remaining left to cut the lip, which I'll do quick, probably do that quickly off camera. We're gonna seal it. So I'm gonna show you how I seal that, which is no secret. And uh, then we'll get to painting. I'm gonna use this semi-gloss polyurethane from Minwax. It dries pretty quickly, but it works very well. And it shows a lot of the nice wood grain from this particular bait. So that's what we're gonna do. And all I do is just simply dip it and give it a little time. can already just see that oak, or that cedar, excuse me, you see the cedar just, grain just pop. Looks so cool. Get it a little closer. Get a good grain on there, good zoom. Look at that. Pretty sharp. We are here to paint session now. First thing I wanna do is literally just go through and I'm gonna give this a base coat of white. This pretty wood, unfortunately, we're gonna cover it all up. As we go through the segments, what you're gonna see is I'm gonna start at the bottom with 
fluoro orange. We're gonna go super bright, and I'm not gonna go the whole bottom. I'll probably just go around the belly of the craw. Um, again, we don't have the cleanest of water here in Nebraska, so I wanna make sure we get a little bit of vibrance on them, because I don't have a rattle. This will be a silent one. Um, but yeah, we'll go basically layer it up. So it's gonna be kind of cool. Hopefully it'll look really nice once it's all finished and sun, said and done. But the last portion will be like the real crawl look with the actual um, shell pattern. Um, that'll be one of the last steps. So stick with it. We're gonna go with floral orange next. As we go up the side, wake it pearl orange just to keep that transition kind of smooth. There's one crucial trick I can I can tell you from a painting experience um, is the blending of all your colors, you know, to make things look super smooth, don't just clear out your gun every time. You know, if you're gonna make a transition, which this is a floral orange, which is hardly, you can hardly tell, to a burnt, uh, or to like a more of a pearl orange. Now I'm gonna bring in a, a Wicked Crimson, but I'm just gonna completely mix that with the, uh, with the pearl orange. That way, when you see that transition, it's gonna look a lot smoother than it would if it was just the crimson. So that's the next step. Now you're going to see a real nice burnt orange look, almost to that red. We still have one more top layer with the red. We're going to add detail sepia and that basically blacks it out as close as it'll be. And we'll be able to really highlight that top portion before we get into the shell. it like this we can do two things so you can either clear coat it now and what that does is it per basically prevents any errors from down the road when you start to work with the shell and any additional stuff so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna put a clear coat on this um, I'm gonna use I have KBS so I'm just gonna dip it it's gonna take probably a couple of maybe 24 hours to 48 hours before it's gonna be ready to go. Um, but that's gonna help. So if you make any errors, painting errors on the next portion, which is a lot more detailed, you can just wipe them off with a little bit of water. So, um, or you could you could paint it straight up. Um, I've done that before multiple times, but it's it's a lot more hectic. If you err, if you put an error on that, it's, it's there forever, which, you know, fish aren't gonna care. But, um, people who uh, look at these things, they, they can tell right off the bat. So we're gonna clear coat it, and then we're gonna catch you back, and then we're gonna finish up all the details on that. Digress what I just said, I'm just gonna paint it. So I'm gonna go Play-Doh to help me create the stencil pattern.
So that's gonna be what it looks like with that uh, Play-Doh on it. I'm going to heat dry it quick, heat set it, and then I'm gonna take that off and we're gonna mold into another spot. Just gonna show you section two before I do that one. Again, Ooh, if I can keep this straight, that's what it'll look like right there. Before I get on to the bottom, check it out. So that is pretty sweet, huh? So I'm gonna go down and get some of those striations on the bottom, probably five of them down here just to kind of give it that full crawl look. And then we're gonna come up on the top and do some texturing. Um, I'm thinking just some stencil work just to kind of give it some 3D effects, just something that's a little bit more than just this. But all right, I went ahead and did those off camera. Nice and, uh, Nice and easy stuff, just cause you just, again, I, I don't know. Obviously, I think I only make baits one at a time, more so than anybody other than maybe Nate Marling. Um, so all of my stuff is just kind of one thing at a time. I don't have a mass produce, but I just use Play-Doh, again, mold it down, and you get these beautiful little striations that make this very, very unique, very, very crawl-like. I mean, look at the bottom of that. So now I'm just gonna add some textures on the top by using some stencils that I have. Um, Anarchy Baits, I believe. This is a very, very small, awesome one. And then I got this one here, which is a little larger, I believe, from Whitmore Farms. So check those people out. I'll put their links in the description below. Um, and I'm gonna come across the top and just kind of give it a little extra texture. So that's the next step. All right, I'll show you quick. That's with a little texture, just the black, and then the side without. So you can just see that take shape. All right, and I think the last piece that I'm gonna do just for fun, I'm gonna put some gold very, very fine gold on the top just to give it a little shimmy, an additional flair. To pull it all together, we're going to go with some black eyes right here. Um, I'm gonna just glue those on quick, show you like you don't, haven't seen it a thousand times. And uh, we'll be uh, pretty much done and coat it, clear coat it and get it out fishing in a few weeks once the wa water is at that temperature. All right, it's been a couple of days. I've got two more clear coats, two additional clear coats on this now. So this KBS is really strong stuff, gives it a nice sheen. It has four in total. We're gonna put two size four uh, Gamakatsu round bend hooks on there. Some size two treble, uh, or size two split rings, I think. Um, and then it pretty much should be done. So I'll get you a couple glamor shots of it. Remember, take these colors out. You don't have to make everything from, from scratch, but take this color out, red, orange, um, this time of year, anywhere between 48 and 50 degree water, 53 degree water temps is when those bats are gonna go hungry for this color. So get after it. Thanks for watching. Hope you found something useful. Hope you liked it. Catch you on the next one.